This um, presentation is uh, part of our series on um, product management. So 30 minutes of product management. Because it's 30 minutes in short, um, I would like to not waste much time. And for the benefit of those who've joined early, we'll start the presentation and then um, delve into uh, the world of product management through the eyes of the product owner. Yeah. So if um, you are familiar with the role of the product owner or product management as a capability, you would realize product management has evolved extensively. And um, there's uh, new things that um, we can continuously learn uh, from product uh, management and how organizations are bringing in the best practices to enable in the delivery of their solutions. Okay. So thanks for joining in once again. So in this series on uh, what we seek to do is to um, share knowledge on product management as um, a capability needed by organizations. So uh, product management professionals um, who join these sessions uh, will have the opportunity of learning best practices that will enable them deliver in their roles. Um, topics to be discussed would range from uh, product discovery. How do we research um, on products? Um, how do we conduct market research, user research? Um, how do we define product strategy? Um, how do we uh, collaborate with um, user experience designers to come up with um, the, the right uh, designs and artifacts that would deliver um, the, our, the expectations of our customers? Also, we'll be looking at uh, product metrics. Uh, we'll also be looking at um, product marketing. Also, there's a, a rise in the demand for product marketers. All these are concepts that we'll be covering in our series. This will enable us as product management professionals get a holistic understanding of the product management capability. So it's it's worth noting that uh, product management is uh, one of the capabilities required to deliver in a, a digital transformation strategy. And I'll be highlighting um, some of these requirements, uh, why product um, management is so important in the delivery of our digital transformation strategies. So to so kickstart, um, I'm Daniel Kostner. I'm a product consultant. Um, I wear different hats within the, uh, the lead team. So I do product consulting. I do product management um, for customers. I also um, double as um, an enterprise agile coach when it comes to um, delivery of transformations where we enable um, Comp we enable individuals within organizations build uh, the needed capabilities to enable their um, digital transformation. So enterprise agility is one of the important um, components required to deliver on our digital transformation. And I, so I also um, work within that space when it comes to our clients. But for this, the purpose of tonight's um, presentation, I'll be wearing my cap as a, a product manager and I'll bring my experiences and uh, expertise within the product management space to bear to flesh out um, today's topic. Uh, it's also worth noting that um, product management as a capability is growing um, day by day. The demand for product managers is great. Um, due to uh, the digital transformation efforts by most traditional businesses. So 
to be able to deliver your digital transformation strategy, organizations need to build the product management capability. So whether you are building software in-house, whether you are outsourcing the build of your software, whether you are tweaking a third party solution to deploy within your organization, um, you would require a product management capability and agile ways of working uh, to enable you um, deliver on your digital transformation. Um, majority of transformations that have suffered major setbacks, um, research tools is the, due to the absence of the product management capability and the agile ways of working, which enhances our people, our processes and our structures. Um, the absence of these capabilities uh, can be linked uh, to the failure of um, some transformation strategy, uh, some, the failure of some digital transformations. So in today's session of 30 minutes of product management, we'll look closely at the role of the product owner in enabling organizations deliver on their digital strategy. So the product owner uh, would have um, responsibilities that they will need to perform. So today's topics is um, unpacking the role of the product owner and key responsibilities and challenges uh, faced uh, by the product owner in delivery of their role. You can't talk about product management or the product owner role uh, without talking about uh, giving a brief history on uh, the evolution of the role. So, or talking about uh, waterfall practices and its impact on software development. So, with the waterfall approach uh, to delivery, it's more of a uh, in software development brought so many challenges. Um, due to the phase gated approach, there was there were silos in the delivery. It's heavy in documentation upfront, hence there's difficulty in or there's no room to make changes. So to do to enable a change in a waterfall environment, there are a series of processes or change requests that must be put in place to um, enable one uh, change or make changes to documented requirements. And what this led to was increased technical depths uh, within the solutions that were, were, were built and impacting uh, the user experience of these platforms. Due to these challenges faced by um, uh, organizations um, using the waterfall approach and uh, the, it led to the rise of other methodologies, uh, lights, lights, I'll call them lightweight methodologies or frameworks that people um, came up with to replace the waterfall processes. Uh, we'll look at some of those light skill frameworks in the next slide. Some include Scrum and extreme programming. These new practices or ways of build enabled uh, software developers in the 80s to shift away from the waterfall processes, which was heavy on documentation and was less customer centric to bring in a more agile approach. So a more agile approach, which is more customer centric, which is more collaborative, uh, which focuses on uh, continuous documentation rather than large upfront documentation, which enable us to deliver value faster to our customers. So the agile ways of, 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 of working was enabled by these lights with frameworks and we the the these frameworks have uh, served as the the main source of the, the 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 product owner role so usually i refer to the 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 product owner role as a framework role it's it came out as a result of that need to change away from the 
the waterfall approach into um, a more agile approach to delivery. So this led to the creation of the, the Agile Manifesto, which has four values and 12 principles and form the basis um, for the Agile movement. So all these frameworks, all these methodologies that exist under the Agile umbrella are there to enable uh, um, us exemplify the four values and 12 principles. So having a scrum team that doesn't exemplify the, the, the principles of individual, the values of individuals and interactions, um, the values of being more customer centric, being able to respond to change. If a scrum team doesn't exemplify these um, agile values, then it is it is just following processes and not being agile. So within um, these frameworks, uh, we that were created to enable the the build of of software, the fast build of solutions that are more customer centric, evolved the product owner role, and the product owner role. Um, works um, um it's going to be seen more within the, the the scrum framework so in frameworks like the dsdm which is dynamic systems development would have a role called the business ambassador they also serve as the voice of the customer in the in the scrum teams so the product owner role came about due to the introduction of these lights with frameworks like Scrum, XP, DSDM. And these lights with frameworks um, formed the, um, the basis and the creators of this framework came together to craft what we now call the, the Agile Manifesto. And that has been the basis of agility. So if you would want to practice agility to its core, then you would have to understand or note the four values and 12 principles and apply them within your teams. In speaking to a team earlier today, um, after going through the Scrum practices, I, I, I reiterated that if you practice Scrum and it's just focused on um, the events as in sprint planning, daily stand-ups and uh, reviews, and we are not exemplifying the values of, of, of collaboration, of customer centricity, of continuous improvement, then we are we are not we will not get the full benefit of adopting Scrum as a practice. So the product owner rule came uh, as a result of the Scrum framework. Traditionally, product management functions have been performed in by the business analyst, the project manager, uh, without the involvement of the team members and the actual people who do the work. But with the evolution of uh, Scrum, uh, we ensure that the people who do the work, the development team, are taking interest or perf also performing um, the work, are working closely uh, with the product owner, are working closely with the business to flesh out requirements continuously, to continuously do our discovery and design sessions to understand the customer needs and work together to deliver these solutions. So, as uh, we talk about the, the product owner role, if you have any questions about um, the product owner role, kindly um, share in the chat. Um, and we would, um, I would gladly um, pause and answer those questions. So remember, the product owner role is more like a framework role. It's if that capability has evolved and now um, on, has so many other skills that is needed um, 
to enable in the delivery of, of, of solutions within businesses. So, in a more um, matrix environment, we would have um, the product, multiple um, agile teams um, working um, closely together uh, to deliver um, a, a solution to the customer. And within these teams, we will have product owners. So in a startup setting, activities that would be performed by the product owner uh, could, would evolve. It would, uh, it would not just be around um, the enabling the, the team to, to understand the user requirements and build. Um, they would also be um, engaging with the business. They'll be also engaging with external, um, the, the customers, engaging stakeholders. When in a metrics environment, when it becomes more, when we are building more complex systems and there are multiple product owners involved, what then happens is um, there's a need to coordinate the various product owners to ensure that um, they are collaborating and managing dependencies effectively. So in that case, we would have the product manager role sitting on top and providing that uh, guidance to the product owners whilst they focus on product um, delivery. Most of the times you would um, um, see courses on um, um, let's say product management um, and to become a, a product manager uh, takes time. There's a lot of learning one has to do and would have to one understand uh, closely uh, the work of the of the of the product owner the role of the product owner within an agile team must be one must grasp that concept very well um, to effectively perform their role as product managers so the product manage product management it's is fast growing um, as an important capability within businesses so in a, in a startup setting, as I said, the product owner would also act as a product manager, performing various functions um, within the business. They could be doing discovery, they would be working with the development team, they would be um, working with operations, providing, ensuring that um, the right metrics are being monitored for the product, they will be working with marketing. But when it becomes more complex in a more complex and matrix environment. When we are building more complex systems, the product owner can't do all this alone. Hence, we would require other uh, product management roles to enable in the delivery of the solution. So in more complex systems, as I showed earlier, you'd see various product owners working with their product teams uh, to build uh, to with their scrum teams and then reporting to the product manager. So product um, management um, as a capability, I would reiterate, is it's very critical for the success of um, um, our transformations or for the delivery of products. So you realize that products um, management capabilities are evolving. There are so many roles coming up. There's demand for product analysts, there's demand for product marketers, product designers. And even at the product manager level, we are looking for more technical product managers. We are looking for product managers with specific specializations. So for an organization to effectively deliver on its um, digital transformation strategy, that whole product um, capability must be developed to ensure that um, they are they are covering all the aspects of the product growth model. Ensure that there's continuous discovery taking place, there's continuous development, there's continuous monitoring of products and its analytics, and there's continuous engagement with the customer to deliver on 
the product's promise. Okay. Okay, so Emmanuel says, um, what's your take on some organizations merging the role of the product owner and a product manager? So um, it's, it's a very common one. Um, I would say it's very, it depends on the, the context. If you are building less complex systems, then it's possible for an individual to act as both the product owner and the product manager. But when the systems become very complex and um, require um, multiple um, teams or multiple stakeholder engagements, then it becomes challenging for an, one person to um, be doing, looking to, at product discovery, that's um, looking at the strategy, the looking at the design, looking at the discovery process becomes challenging, but it happens. We have, um, you could see um, a, um, a job description for a product owner role, and it will they would say you would be you'll be performing some responsibilities just like the, the the product manager. So it's context specific, but as products become more complex, these um, um, uh, these roles are separated to enable the efficiency of delivery. So hitherto there were no product analysts who are these are people consistently monitoring data from the build of the solutions. And with monitoring of this data, they are able to uh, provide insights into how users are interacting with the platforms. Um, where where are users um, we where are users falling off on the platform? Where are users um, having challenges with the usage of the platform? Where are they monitor all these data in terms of uh, um, activations, um, awareness? Um, they are looking at um, um, net promoter scores. Um, various innovation metrics are tracked by this product analyst. They also even support in product discovery by analyzing um, data from the market to help the product manager take decisions. Hitherto, the role of the product analyst did not exist. But due to the increasing need for the product management capability within organizations, we are seeing new roles coming up within the product space. So with, with the rise of AI, with um, the the fast changing uh, nature of, of, of the digital space, trust me, there's more to come when it comes to product management. There are new rules that will be coming up. There are, there are new requirements that would be required of the product uh, uh, management professional. So remember, product management is a capability required. Um, and in a complex environment, that activity cannot be done by one person. We we'll need multiple product roles to support in the delivery. And the inception of these product roles in software development came through the introduction of the product owner role. That's how important the product owner role is to understanding the whole product management landscape. So um, I have a lot to cover on the slides, so let me just go through the slides quickly and then we'll look at the questions before I start. So some key responsibilities of the product owner includes um, one, communicating the product vision. And it's very important the product owner communicates this vision passionately um, to enable buy-in from the, the, the development teams. It enables um, that it increases the purpose and attachment of the development team to the products to be built. So consistently, product owners must communicate the product vision. Who are we building for? Why are we building the solution? What problem it seeks to solve? What it does differently from other products in the market already? They also collaborate with the development team extensively to understand requirements. 
product owners would engage various stakeholders, gather their insights, and communicate these insights as user stories to the development teams. So product owners work very closely with the within the development teams and would have to translate these insights into user stories for the team. They help in the prioritize, they prioritize the product backlog. So they will take feedback from stakeholders, from customers in the market. They will take feedback from the development team and use those insights to prioritize what um, their backlog items that uh, would deliver greater value. Um, and when they prioritize these items, they are able to um, and guide the development team in delivering customer value. So they, through prioritization, we are able to deliver customer value faster. So they will work with the development team, explain these requirements to them in the form of user stories, add the needed acceptance criteria to these stories, and consistently ensure that they are available to answer all questions that would come up from the development team to enable them um, in delivering on these requirements. Also, they would, um, as a product owner, there's a need to continuously gather knowledge. Um, that you always need to continuously learn, learn because new things are coming up, new softwares, new technologies are coming up. And to be able to contribute effectively to the development team, you need to be able to learn and, and build that um, knowledge. So what are some challenges faced by uh, these product owners in their role? One, uh, balancing priorities and demands of stakeholders. So as product managers, we need to build these stakeholder management skills and various stakeholders with different levels of influence and power and interest in our products would would need to we need to consistently balance their needs um, as we engage them so uh, this is one challenge um, product owners face how do they say no to some um, very important stakeholders uh, consistently their backlog keeps changing and is very dynamic so product money product owners must have very good prioritization expertise so, so you must consistently um, learn these prioritization uh, tactics. And as products become complex, as our backlogs becomes more complex, it's difficult to prioritize requirements. Also, product owners have challenges with communicating effectively with stakeholders with diverse needs and expectations. Also, with the fast evolving landscape we find ourselves in, it's dealing with uncertainty and ambiguity, especially in the early stages of product development are some of the challenges. So when we are bringing a new product to the market and we have to go through discovery and understand the, pro the products and the problem space, it's very challenging and um, it will require the product owner to keep learning, learning, acquire more knowledge about the problem to be solved and the industry or the space within which the problem is being solved. Also, product owners must make very tough decisions about what features to prioritize and within and scope management. So uh, tough decisions, when do you say no to the stakeholder? When do you say yes? And it's very important um, um, Product owners um, um, see this challenge and look at effective ways by which um, they are able to uh, make these tough decisions. And these decisions should be based on data and not one's feelings. Hence, um, having good analytic skills is important by, for the product owner. Finally, ensuring alignment between the business goals and the user needs and technical feasibility of the product. If we are able to align the business goals with the, uh, the user needs, um, then um, there is increased um, chance of adoption of our products by 
our users. So these are some challenges faced by, by product owners in their roles. If you know of any other challenges faced by product owners, you can share in the chat. Um, but let's, um, these, these challenges uh, stated um, should be identified to enable um, product owners perform exceptionally in the roles that they've been given. And as I, I, I'll iterate, product ownership is very integral to um, the product management capability within an organization. And so uh, good product owners should have leadership, great leadership skills. They should have good interpersonal skills. They should um, have strategic thinking that's to be able to link the user needs to the business goals will require a lot of strategic thinking. Um, interpersonal skills to be able to relate well with the stakeholders. Um, they have leadership skills to provide guidance to the development team. They should be adaptable and flexible to be able to um, understand the fast changing times we find ourselves in and be able to evolve their product backlog. Uh, they should have good communication skills, show empathy to the customer, be decisive, and last but not the least, passionate about the product they build. If product owners have these in place, then they are able to overcome the challenges that we've identified and are able to deliver on their uh, responsibilities within the organization. So in a nutshell, these are the responsibilities of the product owner. These are some challenges they face within the organization. And to be able to succumb these challenges will require continuous learning, continuous improvement. And these skills would enable the individual uh, become um, um, a great product owner. Yeah. Great. So that's it on the on the product owner role. Um, in subsequent uh, series, um, I will not be the only one presenting. That a numerous um, product specialists lined up to provide us insights into. Uh, product management. If you have any questions on product management, um, don't hesitate to reach out to the lead team or also you could um, join our upcoming trainings on product management. Um, we would provide guidance to enable you build a holistic understanding of the product management capability. Um, Product management doesn't sit only with the product manager. We need diverse roles within an organization to, um, to help in delivering on, the, on this capability. To, if this capability is not well placed, it's not well nurtured within the business, then our digital transformation um, efforts will have great challenges. So if you want to learn more about uh, product management and the product owner role, please join us next week um, on our product owner series. So if you want to share on product uh, management, if you want to share your knowledge in this session, uh, reach out to the lead team. Um, you could also um, um, scan uh, the QR code that I brought up earlier and reach out to us. We would um, engage you and see what topics you would like to share on. Um, um, Kofi Annan, the former US Secretary General, said knowledge is power and information is liberating. Education is the premise of progress in every society and in every family. So we have knowledge and let's share that knowledge so that we liberate others, so then they know the importance of the product uh, management as a capability. As we do this, as we educate other people, trust me, you will learn a lot yourself and you will make great progress.